When they eat churches, they want to lay hand on somebody. Right. They want to speak in counterfeit tongues. Wow. They want to release demons. But how can you make America great again if you don't get on your face and repent? What's a just God supposed to do? If he does nothing, he is, in a sense, giving consent to the right. sin. When the government dictates what religion is, our morals will be stripped. Well, they're setting it up for you guys, the younger generation, to take the hit. They see a church that's on fire for God. Mm -hmm. That's the church that gets targeted. You're in a worship saying, praise Jesus. We are the army of God. We'll dare to discuss what most churches never will. And strive always to speak the truth in love. We are watchmen, warriors, victors. Together, we will fight the good fight and finish strong. This is David Hebner Live. Hey everybody, David Hebner here with you. David Hebner Live. The most important thing is God's alive, okay? And we thank God that we're alive to praise God and worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's what we do every week. You and I, huh, we got to get through all of this nonsense. What? You say, David, it's political, it's cultural, it's economic. No, it's not. It's spiritual. Well, yeah, because we're spiritual beings having a human experience. It's very temporary. We're only here for a short period of time. And speaking of a short period of time, as many of you know, we lost a great warrior last week, a great warrior of the faith, soldier of God's army, Russ Dizdar. You know, I had the honor and pleasure of assisting Russ with boots on the ground, um, many, many interviews, uh, speaking at conferences. But, you know, the most important thing that I realized being with Russ is that he had a heart for truth. He had a hunger for what was real. He had, a, he had a desire of the things of God. And since Russ is passing, passing, there's been this amazing amount of rhetoric on how he died and went to be with the Lord. I mean, the rhetoric, I'm using that term loosely, because... Most of this stuff is sensationalism. And my goal here tonight for this segment of the broadcast is I pray the Holy Spirit will lead us into some truth and understanding about the passing of Russ Dizdar, that his life will be honored in his death as much as it was in the life that he lived. That God will be honored in his death as much as God was honored in the life that Russ lived. You know, Russ, as you know, he was a warrior, but not just a warrior. He was a warrior against the dark side. He, he fought the battles that a lot of people, well, quite frankly, most pastors would run from or not even acknowledge. But I want to deal with the issue of what people are saying about the passing of Russ Dizdar. You know, everything from a uh, car wreck to being poisoned, murdered, even kidnapped. I'm interested in the truth. I want to know what happened. Now, for the sake of the family, there's certain things I will not say, but because you and I have known Russ for such a long time, if you've listened to this channel, and many of you have known him personally, some know his, his works from his channel, but you know that we have come to grow into love the, the life and the ministry of Russ Dizdar. Now, I didn't realize that one of the last videos one of the last interviews I would do on Russ would play a key element to me understanding possibly how Russ could have left 
this dimension. Not sensationalism, but asking God to give us some understanding of what's going on. And I want you to leave your mind open, and I want you to, to know that this is a spiritual battle. When I listened to one of the last interviews I did with her, I said I had to listen very closely, and I'm going to share that with you tonight. And I think it's very important for us to listen to. Listen to the passion in his voice. Listen to the words that he says. What are we speaking on? One of the most passionate things I, I saw Russ ever speak on in any of my interviews, and I did many with him, was the topic of astral projection. Yeah, astral projection, the, the act of one leaving one's body. I listened to it one night, well, several nights right after the passing. I want you to listen to the first part of this video, and then I'm going to bring on a very close friend of Russ, and we're going to talk about what really happened right before his passing. Let's watch this video. Russ, we've been talking about astral projection, leaving your body, okay? There's tens of millions, you said, practicing it all over the world, okay? You mentioned the military, that they are actually, they've been practicing it for a long time. What does astral projection have to do with the end times of persecution of Christians? Uh, or does it? And if it does, yeah. how does it fit in? Well, I think that, again, um, the counterfeit. The other side has counterfeit. Now, I'll, I'll take this to... And I asked somebody last night, have you ever heard a sermon on the troops of Antichrist? The, the largest, strongest, most powerful, most equipped military is being built in the shadows right now. The, the scripture shows it will become the biggest force when the new age, you know, the, the new world order stuff comes, the right. Luciferian order. Right. Um, the Antichrist can do nothing without that. They have to have the soldiers to bring the chaos okay. all the way to Armageddon, Revelation 19.19. 19. The Antichrist is out there, kings of the earth and the armies, plural, globally, wow. millions upon millions. Wow. Now here's what it teaches about it. They're gonna be the most supernaturally enhanced. Right. So when we talk about astral projection, you cannot do that without being supernaturally enhanced. Right. So when we look at 100 million satanic ritually abused worldwide, all stemming from the Nazi agenda of a master race, of, of augmented or hybrid individuals, they're all trained to do astral projection, let alone other powers they've been given. Oh, wow. To fight, to engage, to release curses, to, oh. to invade hearts and minds, to search out Christians to bring them, to find them, to remote them and, and bring them down. You know, you and I have done many shows on program multiples, SRAs. Are you telling me that a lot of these program multiples and victims of SRAs have been programmed and designed for astral projection, so when this comes about, Absolutely. that's part of their job? Absolutely, and I told one story in, and I think I answered the story, I, one, one military story, a Fort Bragg Psy Warrior. We engaged for seven years. We heard about this back in the 90s. I knew about it already. I mean, right. we engaged on the occult side. When I got saved, I renounced all things. You know, I, there was just a complete cleansing out of all those things, burning all the occult stuff. So, so I left that world and the fullness of power and, and of, of the Spirit of God. So we have a Psy warrior, uh, uh, you, we, they would call themselves a satanic chosen one, a, okay. um, a, 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 a real soldier. Now all SRAs, okay. when you really get down inside to programmed cult loyal personalities, okay. they will all acknowledge we're here to bring in the chaos. We're here to serve the Antichrist. Wow. Even in England, when I met the top guy just a few months ago, the right. top guy working with SRA, right. first question I said, why are they here? Immediately, and I've never met this man in my life, immediately, they're here to bring England down. They're here to bring in a new order and help the Antichrist. Wow. So, the, and, and this is recently? This is just a few months ago when I went to Scotland. So you believe now they're going to be making the move at any time. In other words, the stage is set. Sure. Stage is set. You know, yeah. before sure. you and I really started interviewing, getting into all this, I, you know, you think about persecution of Christians and end times, 
but very few people think about astral projection, uh, how they project their spirits in, sure. out of their body. Sure. And there's a war like that. There's a war like uh, that. Oh, Okay, so my question is, when they do project themselves out of the body, because you talk about program multiples being programmed for that, they project themselves out of, the, out of their body, and how does that, how can that come against a true believer? Sure. Uh, the, the experience I had, the first experience I had was way in the 90s, in the Cy Warrior from Fort Bragg, highly trained, high-level program multiple, all that kind of stuff. Most powerful one I've ever met. So I'm middle of the... Yeah. Wow. Okay. David, so what's the point? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what the point is and what, what I believe is worth talking about. Folks, we cannot, when a great warrior goes home, the, the, the book is not closed. As a matter of fact, the book opens even further. And I'm going to be the one, if I may be so humble, to keep that book open. We're talking about the book that Russ opened, which is the book of truth when it comes to demonic activity, to d uh, demonic warfare. With me is my special guest, who was a good friend of Russ, uh, with, with him boots on the ground, shared in his ministry, Mr. Tom Dunn. Tom, you there with me, buddy? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks for having me, David. Thanks for coming on, and I appreciate um, you coming on and sharing this time with me. Um, Tom, you were very good friends with Russ. I know you were for a lot of years, and, and you shared in his ministry, vice versa. Um, tell me about your time with Russ before the passing. I don't want to get into his death right away, right now. I want to know, was there anything going on leading up to it? Was everything just hunky-dory? Was life as usual? I mean, can you share something with us? Well, um, David, I just want to mention that, wow, that footage, seeing my friend there is, um, it's, um, man, I love that guy. Yeah, uh, life was normal for Russ, when what that means is Russ was actively uh, investigating and exposing uh, occult covens, Satanist, and uh, actively uh, praying for them, uh, praying against them, and uh, praying for protection for him and his family. So yeah, you could say life was normal for him. He was engaging um, the type of people that uh, Hollywood makes movies out of, and they make millions of dollars, you know, off of this. Uh, why do they do it? Why why do people watch these movies? Because they like the thrill. They like, you know, watching somebody, you know, on the screen. Uh, that is a uh, bad guy or Satanist, you know, or a uh, mafia type, you know, or a mixture of the two. So that's what Russ did. And um, it's, it's not a secret. And uh, Russ has talked about this, that um, there was definitely a hit put out on his life in the past few months. And he revealed this on the Hagman uh, show. A hit. When you say Tommy hit, you mean a hit man? Someone that's going to yes. kill him? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and how do you know this, or how did he know this, or what, what transpired? Um, well, without um, giving too much information about an open case, and um, he, uh, he, he was there, and uh, uh, one of his team members were there, and uh, somebody confessed this, and they showed them, according to uh, the interview there on the Hagman Report, uh, Russ and this team member saw the money that was paid. Uh, to uh, to be used. Of course, Russ is is constantly just engaging people. What we call SRA, standing for Satanic Ritually Abused. Okay, uh, yeah. these people were um, grew up in a, a generational Satanic family. Uh, they were uh, involved in the military. They were programmed. Uh, many of them, uh, just de depending on the. The training, they have many different jobs. One of them could be assassination. One of them could be uh, a runner. One of them could be uh, some kind of a spy, and so on and so forth. You know, you think of uh, you think of somebody like a a Navy SEAL or a Green Beret. Think of somebody like that being used for the dark side. Right, right. And this 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 uh, this shooter, this this hitman. I, I did a lot of videos with Russ on program multiples. Chances are, one of his personalities program multiple one of his personalities was that of an assassin yeah. uh, 
of, of a hitman. Um, and so, Tom, you know, I shared this with you that Russ called me um, a while back and said, David, because he knows I bring my children, my kids with me because I have them in the ministry. We were going to come up and do some boots on the ground with them, do some some filming and so forth. He said, David, things are not that great right now. There's some things going on. I'm paraphrasing. OK, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but but he let me to believe that things were not normal. OK. Um, and since then, I've been praying for him. Uh, and I came to you. We did a conference together called Take on the World. And I came to you and I said, Tom, I said, is is Russ OK? Because in my spirit, I was feeling things were not OK. I'm talking in the, in the spirit realm. OK. Um, and uh, I can't remember exactly what you said to me, but but now we kind of know that things were not OK. And my question to you, as it got closer to his passing, did you realize things were not OK? Did anything happen at all? Um, well, uh, l- let me say this, uh, David. Russ, I saw Russ a week and a half ago and he was sick. Uh, and um, then it was just a half a week after that that he passed. As far as officially, you know, what happened with him. And, and, and I know this is um, this is what we talked about. I'm going to leave that up to the family now, yeah. you know, and, and they'll make a statement and that's the statement that she would, that we should trust. Okay. Um, we know as people that were close with Russ, uh, Russ called me conversations, uh, m- a lot of information that I can't divulge, but there was always, uh, there was always danger, you know, uh, yeah. that, that was just a given. I, I've been out with Russ many, many times and I, I've been out with him in the last few months. So th- there was always danger, and I, you know, this man has put himself in harm's way many, many times, um, and he did it in order to uh, present the gospel and to expose the enemy. Okay. That's right. To continue his work, Tom. You know, um, when I spoke at this conference with him, I did this interview, and we'll see the rest of it when we come back after a break. Um, he what, he promised he would meet me at eight o'clock that morning to do this interview because I had to jump on a plane and he got up and boy, did he he didn't look good. And come to find out he had been up half the night praying for people, you know, doing demonic warfare, deliverance and so forth. But he actually lived up to his promise. He showed up. We did this interview. He was a man that loved God. He was a man that that loved the ministry that God had given him, uh, Tom. Also, too, I had Jamie Waldron on my show. And after Jamie did my show, he got really viciously attacked by a demon and he called Russ and they prayed over him. And then Russ called me right after the show and said, David, are you OK? And I said, yes, Russ, I am OK. And he said, are you sure? And I said, yeah. He said, OK, well, let me know because we're praying for you. Well, Tom, I have to be honest with you. I was not OK. I was not OK. But, you know, Sometimes you're in this trench, and I'm sure you're the same way. When things are not okay, you have to rely on the Holy Spirit whether you're going to tell people if things are not okay. They're not okay a lot of times. I mean, you fight demons. You're in, you're in, you're in this battle too. And I, th- I think, you and we didn't talk about this, but correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of times we're not okay. You know, I go through battle after battle after battle, and people say, are you all right? And I go, yeah, I'm okay, you know. Because that's kind of what we do, right? Well, that's true, David. And when we're in the, um, you know, in the public eye, the way that we are, we don't want to show our hand, you know, and yeah. we, we want to be very careful about the information that we give. Um, you mentioned about Russ praying all night. That's the way that he was. Russ had a prayer map, uh, a notebook that went back 30 years on cases that he would pray for. I just got a message the other day uh, from one of the very first people that um, that Russ ever ministered to that was involved in the occult. And they they said Russ was probably praying for me up until he passed away. And I said, it's probably true. Russ always he never forgot. He wrote it down so he wouldn't forget all the cases that he's ever worked on and prayed over him and asked the spirit of God, 
Give me insight. Give me a break in this case. Help me to reach the victims. Heal the victims. Uh, you know, uh, bring the victims to Christ, you know, and uh, bring the perpetrators, uh, perpetrators to justice. That's what he would do. He would pour over that prayer map. And a lot of people will say, man, I want to do what Russ does. Uh, well, you don't really see what he does. You see him on video and you might hear about him out boots on the ground. But the the most important work he did was in the prayer closet. Yes, ab absolutely. You know, in this last video we just watched, he made a statement. He said, most SRA, satanic ritually abused, they are programmed to serve the Antichrist. Well, you know and I know that he dealt all the time with SRAs. Um, we deal with SRAs, but he especially deals with them. When you're dealing in that world, Tom, you're dealing with people that serve the Antichrist. You're dealing with a very strong force. And when we come back, everybody, uh, we're talking to Tom Dunn, a good friend of mine. A good, it was a good friend of Russ Dizdar's. Um, we're talking about the, the life and the death of our friend Russ. Uh, we, we're asking the Holy Spirit to, to give us some direction, to give us some um, enlightenment as to, what, as to what was going on before and up to it. And when we come back, I'm going to be talking to Tom about... Um, the, well, let me say this. The minute I told my wife Russ had passed, she immediately said, let's pray and bring him back from the dead. I'm going to talk to Tom about that. I'm going to ask him about that. Also, I'm going to be asking him about the end times persecution of Christians, which I talked to Russ about in this next segment of the video. And also, one of the most important things Russ, in this video, I believe is going to reveal, give us some clue as to some of the battles that he was fighting, possibly right up to the time of his going to be with the Lord. I'm David Hevener. We'll be right back. There's a practice, an ancient practice, where one's spirit leaves their body. It's called astral projection. Okay, so dreams. That, could this be a form of astral projection? I can tell you that practitioners on the other side yeah. and ex-Satanists will tell you what I'm going to say. Okay. We target your dreams. A woman woke up. She felt the presence of something in the doorway yeah. that was trying to pull her out of her flesh. And what she did was call out to the name of Jesus and bang, that attack stopped. She went back into her body. She woke up. The, the New Agers call it the, the astral plane. It's sort of like a parallel dimension. A lot of times people will experience things like uh, sleep paralysis. It's real but lethal, real but counterfeit, real but, but uh, completely in error. There's a risk of insanity. God is totally against it. If the church was doing its job, would New Age and astral projection be so prevalent amongst Christians? In these last days, there will be perilous times. People will worship false gods lying signs and wonders. Bibles will be taken out of schools. As the Antichrist arises, Christians will be persecuted. But now, God's people have awakened. David Hevner Investigates is proud to bring you End Times Investigations, a new DVD series containing over eight hours of interviews, commentaries, and teaching on Illuminati and the New World Order. Satanism, miracles and healings, the Antichrist and one world religion. David interviews some of the top experts in their field. Hi, I'm David Hevener and I'm proud to bring you this brand new DVD collection, End Times Investigations. David reveals how the media is working hand in hand with the Antichrist system. Order now and receive this special DVD collection. Equip yourself and your family. Text bonus to 41444 or davidhevner.tv slash order. Call toll free 844-806-0006. Text bonus to 41444 or davidhevner.tv slash order. Call toll free 844-806-0006. Hey everybody, David back with you, David Hevner. Welcome to David Hevner Live here with you every well, every week, right? Because you're my family. 
I love you. All right, so we have this DVD. It's End Times Investigation. I know I talk about it a lot. I'm, I'm only printing a limited number, okay? And why am I doing it? It's eight hours of footage that you may not be able to watch anyplace else. Why? Because eh, it's been censored, a lot of it, okay? Uh, we talk about Satanism, demonic powers, Illuminati, New World Government, uh, One World Government, the, the Antichrist, uh, and the One World Religious System, End Times Miracles. And I have a lot of my buddies on here, my friends. One of my special friends is Russ um, on here, and um, if you'd like that, you can just um, pick it up. I appreciate it. You can just dial the, uh, text the word chosen to 91999 or go to davidhevener.tv forward slash order, or you can call 844-806-0006. Okay, um, also, uh, sign up for David Hevener TV. Just go to davidhevener.tv, become a subscriber. Now, if you do, I told you I would call you and sing happy birthday to you. Well, I had some people subscribe last week, and someone said, I, it's my birthday. So um, I called them and, um, to wish them a happy birthday. And, well, let's take a look at that. Everybody, um, Angelica just signed up for uh, David Hevener TV. She subscribed, and I promised that I'd call and say, ha sing happy birthday. I want you to hear a... Um, an email that she wrote. Uh, she said, uh, David, I've subscribed to your channel in honor of what the Lord will continue to do through um, Russ Dizdar's legacy. So um, she basically signed up in honor of Russ Dizdar and that she uh, wishes that the, the show uh, will continue to spread the gospel just like Russ did. Anyway, we're going to call uh, Angelica here and uh, sing happy, happy birthday to her, okay? Uh, Angelica. Like I said, she called, signed up for David Heavener TV, and um, oh. <clears throat> is this uh, Angelica? Yes, this is. I have you on speakerphone. <laughs> Hi, Angelica. This is David Heavener. How are you? I am so blessed to hear from you. I was just showing my friend Cam um, your videos, and she's very grateful that you're speaking out about these things. She tries to speak out, too. Oh, well, God bless you, and thank you for being such a mighty warrior. I appreciate it, Angelica. And, yeah, and thank you for your support and signing up for David Heavener TV. Awesome. I'm so <laughs> glad my kids get to see that you guys are real people, doing the best you can for the Lord, putting yourself out there, being obedient, and I love the example. Oh, great. Well, listen, I'm going to sing happy. Is it your birthday or whose birthday is it? It's my birthday, yes. Uh, all right. Well, happy oh, okay. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Today I celebrate your special life. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, it's true. I just want to say, happy birthday, Angelica. Awesome. Woo. I tell my friends, like, he sings it different. I like how he sings it. I was like, I'm a <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Well, God bless you. And uh, hey, we'll see you maybe on the show tonight, okay? Awesome. God bless you. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, well, Tom, listen, we got to have a little relief here, you know, so um, uh, if, if it's your birthday, I'll call you and sing happy birthday to you. Tom. Hey, hey, not my birthday yet, but happy birthday, Angelica. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, Tom, uh, we're talking about Russ. Um, you know, huh, when he passed, my wife ran to me and said, David, let's, let's just raise raise him from the dead. Let's pray and raise him from the dead. And I struggle with this because Jesus said we have the power to heal the sick, cast out demons, and raise the dead. Um, what do we have to do to be able to utilize that power? Because, you know, I talked to Mike Spalding last week on the show about death, and he said death is, is of the enemy. You know, it, it is of the enemy. Do you, first of all, do you believe we have the power to raise the dead? Um, I absolutely believe God can raise the dead, and um, I believe that we can pray and ask God to raise the dead. Uh, I think of uh, I think of Paul, you know, in the I think it was it the I might be wrong. The book of was a book the book of Acts where somebody was fell asleep in the window and fell out, and Paul went over and laid hands on him and prayed for him. Um, I personally have not ever witnessed it or seen it. I I prayed that prayer. I prayed that prayer for Russ, and I asked Lord, wake him up from this sleep wake him up from this sleep. We need him. We need him here, Lord. And Russ has said many times, he said, once I get to heaven, I'm not going to want to come back here. Um, 
Oh, really? <laughs> so he said that, Tom. He said once he gets to heaven, he didn't want to come back. Yeah, yeah. He said that oh. many times. Okay, you made a good point. I think we should ask people before they die, what do you want us to do when you die? Do you want us to bring you back? Right? Because yeah. <laughs> we ask people if they want to be cremated or buried. Why not ask them if they want to come back if they die? Well, I don't think there would be anything wrong with that. I, um, that that's a good question. I can't, uh, you know, if somebody were to ask me that question right now, I, 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 don't, I don't have an answer, you know, because I'm, I'm ready for both. I feel like I have a lot of life to live, but right. man, the, the crazier the world gets, uh, you know, the better, the, the better paradise, the better heaven looks to us, obviously. Absolutely. Um, we're talking about astral projection. You know, I told you this video that I did with Russ was one of the last ones I did with him, but it was the most passionate. Tom, um, did he talk to you about astral projection? Did you ever have any, um, uh, without giving the next segment of this video away, did you ever, ever have any conversations with Russ about people astroing out? Oh, yeah. That's something that Russ talked about and taught a lot. And the people that we engage, the people that were reaching out for help, they had this ability. Many of them had this ability to be able to do this. Yeah. And uh, this is a demonic ability, and it's also taught in military. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's watch the next segment of this video, Tom. And I want to talk about this because there's something that Russ said that really struck a chord, and I really want to talk about this. I have to talk about it. I have a need to. And that's one of the reasons I have you on the show, so you can talk to me about it. But um, let's roll this next clip. This is me and Russ uh, talking about astral projection in one of the last interviews I did with him before he went on to be with the Lord. The, the experience I had, the first experience I had was way in the 90s in the Cy Ward from Fort Bragg, highly trained, high level program model, all that kind of stuff. Most powerful one I've ever met. So I'm middle of the night, three o'clock, I wake up. I, I feel like there's a person in my house. I begin to go look. I'm in a hallway, looking down the hallway. I have a whole distinct feeling there, I'm looking, I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking there's a person standing in front of me, but there's also something very evil and wrong. The Spirit of God's giving me warning. So I, I'm like, I'm, I'm praying and I'm saying, Lord, I think there, this person's astral, you know, astral projecting into my house. What do I do? The Spirit of God says, target the demon that empowers them. I prayed against that demon, wow. commanded it to be bound and broken, broke to break its power. Uh, everything was clear, went back to bed. Next day, true story, before, I'm telling you before God, this true story. Next day, the Psy Warrior calls me. Right. When I was, they said to me, when I was in your house in the hallway last night, Russ, when you targeted the spirit that empowers me to do this, as soon as you did that, the spirit was broken off, I was snapped back oh. into my body immediately. Wow. Okay, so some, you said a Psy Warrior. This is a guy that is a demonic that projects his sure. spirit out. Sure. It's projected it into your house, I guess, to do evil to come in, of sure. some sort. Yeah. You came against it in yeah. the name of Jesus. It went away. Sure. And that guy told you yep. that the minute you did that or you told him you did that, he goes, boom, yeah. came right back yeah. in. Yeah. I well, didn't even have I didn't have to so, tell them. They told me. They That's, told you. Yeah, I didn't want to give them no lead. I they said they said, Russ, when we were looking at you in that hallway, when you when you attacked our spirit, they call it a spirit, a demon. It's right. a demon. Um, and commanded to be, you know, and it, it left. It, 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 it couldn't do anything. Right. And instantly, yeah. I was snapped back to my body. So, wow. they uh, they knew that. And now we, and then we we. I mean, now we got. I've got you know over twenty years of engaging that issue again and again. Right. There's a distinct feeling when it's astral projection. A different feeling if there's summoning. And here's another side of this. The same ones know how to summon a spirit, conjure, target you to send warfare against you. New levels of warfare. Wow. New levels of warfare. Is this, and to get back to the persecution of Christians, is this why you think the military might be might be involved, involved in this? And if so, are they gonna be for us or against us well, in the end times? Well, prior to the great chaos and the breaking down, the shadow system will infiltrate and be really a supernaturally shadow system okay. in the political, military, economic, and technological worlds. Okay. I already believe they're there. Okay. And so when the call comes, this is all related to the 
It's a red horse prophecy I mentioned in the conference, okay. which 99% of Christians in 10 years, when I ask this question, how many know the content of the red horse prophecy? 99% of the time, no one, no one knows. It is a prophecy about the initiation of the multi-continental release of those who are going to slaughter, persecute Christians, go after, to bring everything down. It is, super, it is supernaturally uh, wow. done by them. I wrote that, that's where the term Black Awakening. The Black Awakening, the book, is tied into the Red Horse Prophecy. Wow, you know, I wrote The Last Evangelist. I'm yeah. getting ready to shoot it. I've got to go back and rewrite some of the episodes and work in the <laughs> sure. astral projection because sure. this brings it to a whole new level. Because I would go, Lord, how could this happen? Well, when you're fighting this warfare mm -hmm. on another level, mm -hmm. and most Christians, Russ, don't yeah. even, I mean, they're clueless. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So, so what you're saying is a lot of people that see demonic beings in their house or around, this could be someone projecting yeah. themselves sure. into that. Sure. And but, notice how many people, like when we ask the question in the crowds at the conferences, yeah. how many of them, when we say, how many here had an experience of sleep paralysis? Which means something came into your room, right. pressed down on you, right. you couldn't talk at first, yeah. and you knew it was an entity, yeah. a demon. Right. So look at how many are having that experience. Lots. I believe half of it has to do with astral projection. You're being targeted. Wow. You didn't do anything wrong. You don't have any doors open, but they have new levels. It doesn't negate our authority, our power. We can handle it mm -hmm. if we know. Okay, wow. Okay, so dreams. Yep. People have dreams. Yeah. That, could this be a Good form point. of yes. astral projection? I can tell you that practitioners on the other side yeah. and ex-Satanists will tell you what I'm going to say. Okay. We target your dreams. We try to invade your dreams. We try to wow. bring dirty, dirt, stuff, confusion into your dreams. Wow, because I've had dreams, to be honest with you, that sometimes have been pretty dark yeah. and pretty embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saying there's a good chance because, yeah. you know, you do what you do, I do what I do. They'd yeah. like to take us out. Sure. That they could be coming in and affecting our dreams like that? Sure. Well, it's, again, think in terms of counterfeit. Okay. In the Old Testament, Daniel, God put a dream into a demon-worshipping pagan king's head that disturbed him so badly that he, that he called all the sorcerers and all the Chaldeans and all them. They couldn't do anything about it because it came from God to bring, help bring him down, to, to initiate what was going to happen with Daniel. Only Daniel was given the insight. All this turns into God invading Babylon, bringing that king down, bringing and establishing his name. God did that engaging a demon-worshipping king. The wow. other side is going to do that. The, see, you gotta, we got to remember, that side wants to do warfare. Right, right. And yeah. if demons can use practitioners like that to give them new aid. To f They're here to fight us. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood. They're here to fight us. Wow. So, Russ, what you're saying is chances are if someone has a bad dream, I mean a nightmare or a dream that's kind of perverted, yes. you know, and yep. you guys out there, you know what I'm talking yep. about. There's different kinds of perversion. There's a good chance that this is demon warfare. Sure. Someone has projected themselves right. into our dreams? Sure. In the book of Acts, and, I, and, and, and God does give dreams and visions. Right. When he gives them, they'll never be count. You know, they'll never count. You know, contradict scripture. Right. Um, and you and look through Acts; they always brought about evangelism, uh, confirmation of biblical truth. It always led to ministry, and and it glorifies the Lord in the midst of it. Right. Theirs bring, and that's where if they bring dark dreams, dirty dreams, to bring warfare to you, they want you to feel guilty. Wow. They want you to, to be, see, their whole goal they, is to cripple a believer. Wow. <clears throat> wow. Okay, so, Tom, Russ was talking about a Psy warrior in his house. Um, he, he battled someone that had astraled out in his house. That, you heard him say that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I probably, this had happened more than once with him. Um, of course it happens probably with all of us. A lot of people don't even realize it. Um, I, I sickness. Do, do you believe there's demons of sickness? I mean, it, it, are, are demons behind sickness? 
Um, I believe definitely uh, sometimes they are. And you can look at the scripture where Jesus um, cast out demons that were causing people to be sick. Um, yeah. Even right. even causing people to have seizures. So there's yeah. no doubt about that. Yeah. 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 Um, and targeted. Russ talked about people being targeted. OK, just like he was targeted with the hitman. He is also he was also and we are targeted spiritually, right? By evil forces, by demons, correct? Right, right. So, Tom, let me ask you a question. If you were the one who passed away and Russ was sitting here tonight talking about you, do you think he would be wanting to know what was behind it? I don't mean... Tom, I'm not talking about were you in a car wreck. I'm not talking about were you kidnapped. That's not what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. I'm talking spiritually because that's where you and I live and that's where Russ lived. Um, would he, and, and I'm asking this as an honest question. I'm not asking to set you up because I just now, I wonder this myself. So you and I are just having a coffee conversation. But I'm trying to imagine this. Would he be interested in what was behind that? Again, spiritually. Um, that you were being targeted or, I mean, what, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, I have no doubt that Russ would investigate it and he would pursue it. Um, uh, that that's just the kind of guy that he is. And he would, um, yeah, he, he would look into it, you know, Russ and I, uh, anytime we were going into a dangerous situation, uh, whether he was or I was, we would call each other and give each other a heads up, you know, just to ask for prayer and just say, hey, if I don't come back from this, you know, come looking for me, something like that. Right. So um, there's no doubt that the people that Russ was making angry, uh, they did this sort of thing. They did rituals. OK, they they did rituals to appease demons. That means spilling blood, whether uh, animal or human blood. OK. And uh, they summon demons and they send demons. Uh, do they have the ability to uh, to do that? They absolutely do. I really believe they do. Is that what happened to Russ? I cannot say that 100%. But I, I will say this, and this is pretty public, okay? Uh, Russ, uh, about five or six years ago, uh, he was on death's door. And he you can look at the archives and he admits, okay, that um, there was a spiritual attack, okay, on him where rituals were done against him, okay? And he had it confirmed through three different people, including himself, and he tells the story where he thought, he, he told uh, his wife Shelly goodbye because he thought that, that he was going to die that night, okay? Uh, it, was, it was really a brutal time for him, and I, I remember this, and I remember this, you know, him telling me the stories, and he's also shared them on air as well. So uh, Russ was in the line of work where these types of things happen. Now, I do want to say this. Russ knew how to fight it, okay? Russ knew how to battle it. Russ, uh, he taught us to strike first, okay? And that's mm -hmm. what we do. And um, why are we vulnerable sometimes? I don't know, okay? Uh, sometimes we are. Uh, we know how to fight it. I've been attacked spiritually. I've had rituals done against me, and I learned how to fight them. Uh, you know, and, uh, sometimes I, you know, there, there have been times where it's got the best of me, you know, but yeah. with the, with the teaching and the training, uh, what I always tell people is we learn how to win more than we, than we lose. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's the thing. Russ was talking about being targeted in this video. He was talking about supernaturally enhanced. He was talking about the Psy warrior. He was talking about the SRA's mission. Uh, to serve in reigning in the new world order, okay? I don't think for one moment, for one moment, that Russ had a battle with a Psy warrior and lost. I do not believe that, okay? So that's not what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Please understand. What I will say could be a possibility, conjecture, um, is that Russ was in the midst of battles. In other words, he was in a war, right? Um, and I'm going to say something, Tom, I haven't said before, but I'm going to say it. Possibly, 
the Lord said, it's time for you to come on home, son. Think of it this way, Tom. You're in a fight with somebody, you know, let's say uh, mar martial arts, right, kickboxing. And, um, and you know you can take the guy down. And all of a sudden your dad says, hey, Tom, come on, son, let's go home, right? I just believe that the Lord called him home, that it was that the Lord wanted him to be home with him. But I believe that Russ was fighting a spiritual battle that possibly none of us will may not ever know about the details of. But I just feel like that he was really at the height of warfare. Um, what say you on that? I say that the Lord knows exactly what he's doing. And um, even, even now, as we see Russ Dizdar removed from the battle, it doesn't make sense to us. But I believe in a year when we look back on this, we'll see God's perfect plan. And we'll see uh, just uh, uh, exactly how the Lord moved and used those of us remaining to completely um, just bring destruction to those that would attack Russ Dizdar, those that would attack churches, those that would harm people. I say yeah. that boldly, and I'm not. I don't want to speak for the Lord, but I I know I know, well. I will say this: the Lord knows exactly what He's doing. Our days are numbered, and uh, nothing happens to us that the Lord does not allow. So yes. we have many people. If they could get away with it right now, they would kill us. They would kill you, David. Mm -hmm. They would kill me. Okay, but the Lord's hand of protection is on us. And uh, when he calls me home, then then I'm going to go uh, and uh, uh, he will use whoever's left behind to carry on the work and um, and just execute it perfectly, I believe. Uh, absolutely, Tom. Well said. You know, it gives me with with his going home to be with the Lord. It gives me it gives me kind of a I don't know, kind of a feeling of more power. I, it, I say feeling because I already have the power. I know that. But a feeling of more power that, hey, you know, if Russ went on to be with the Lord and he fought to the very last moment, that's how I'm going to do it. Right. It kind of gives you more that oomph. Right. You want to you want to fight like you see your fellow fellow battle uh, a soldier go down. Well, you're ready to get up and take out the enemy even more and more and more. I think there's going to be a Russ Dizdar Jr. come along at some point that's going to pick it up. A man just slay the enemy like crazy, uh, Tom. And you know what? Hey, it might be you, son. You never know. So. Well, um, we've certainly received the training, and we're going to be obedient to the Lord uh, yeah. by, by God's grace and by, you know— um, as much as we're humanly uh, able to do it, you know. Uh, yeah. I believe Russ Dizdar uh, worshipped God and praised God with his very last breath. I believe yeah. that with all my heart. I know that man. And um, uh, I don't get it. You know, our we don't understand. You know, it hurts us to yeah. lose somebody. Yeah. And we're dealing with this loss right now. But yeah. ultimately, uh, God wins. Right, right. I, I know that you were with him toward the end, and I know that uh, he was sick, and I know that you did everything you could, and so did everybody, uh, to, uh, well, to keep him from going to be with the Lord. Uh, and I know it really hurts. I, I know because I'm feeling th that hurt and that loss and that emptiness. But, Tom, um, I just want to say I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and sharing some of these intimate thoughts and words. Uh, you didn't have to do it, and I really appreciate you doing it. God bless you, David. Thanks again. Yeah. yeah, Tom, give us your website of how people can get in touch with you. Hey, uh, throughtheblack.com is the website, and you can go on there and check check out Wake the Dead Radio 24-7 radio, which now has Last Evangelist David Heavener material on there, by the way. <laughs> cool, man. I, I feel honored. Okay. Awesome, brother. We, we have to go get them, okay? So I appreciate you so much, Tom. Thank you. Yep. God bless you. God bless. Uh, okay, everybody, we've been talking about Russ Dizdar going to be with the Lord. There's a um, GoFundMe uh, campaign. We're going to put that up. If you, God lays it on your heart to, um, to help uh, his family out, um, I don't want to get into details on things, but they sure could use the financial help. Um, Spencer, do we have that up, that GoFundMe? Okay. All right, good. So go check it out, everybody. I love you guys. Um, 
we have another guest on, uh, but before we bring her on, I want to bring my lovely wife on. Uh, uh, do, uh, no, actually, we, ha we have Susan already there. Do we have Susan in the room there? No, we don't. Okay, well, I'm going to bring, uh, I want to bring uh, Shanita on if she's out there. Are you there? Well, nobody's here, so I'm left all by myself. Okay. All right. Well, listen, we get back from this break. We're going to bring um, my wife on. We're going to be talking about prayer, and we're going to be praying for you, uh, taking prayer requests and also praise reports. Okay. We'll be right back. They've made many, many movies about aliens, but the question is, are they angelic or demonic? Why don't they want to acknowledge uh, the supernatural? Uh, the seminary education today, that when pastors are being trained, there's no emphasis on the supernatural, even though the Bible's a supernatural book. As in the days there's of no, uh, so it will be. Yeah. And it goes down to, well, what is their ultimate purpose? Inaugurate the Antichrist. In these last days, there will be perilous times. People will worship false gods, lying signs and wonders. Bibles will be taken out of schools. As the Antichrist arises, Christians will be persecuted. But now, God's people have awakened. David Hevner Investigates is proud to bring you End Times Investigations. A new DVD series containing over eight hours of interviews, commentaries, and teaching on Illuminati and the New World Order, Satanism, miracles and healings, the Antichrist and One World Religion. David interviews some of the top experts in their field. Hi, I'm David Hevener, and I'm proud to bring you this brand new DVD collection, End Times Investigations. David reveals how the media is working hand in hand with the Antichrist system. Order now and receive this special DVD collection. Equip yourself and your family. Text bonus to 41444 or davidhevner.tv slash order. Call toll free 844-806-0006. Text bonus to 41444 or davidhevner.tv slash order. Call toll free 844-806-0006. Hey, everybody. David back with you. I love you guys. I appreciate it. Hey, if you'd like to support the ministry, just text the word CHOSEN to 91999, uh, or you can go to davidhevener.tv forward slash order. Um, you know, this is how we survive. Uh, I will not go to the beast and ask them uh, for money to fund our TV series, The Last Evangelist. We do it. Where God said, I'll call my people will step up to the plate, and you have, but we've got to do it even more. We have to keep this thing going. We're going to come out with the first episode of Last Evangelist, uh, the 1st of January. It's been filmed. Now we need to market it and get the money for the episode two. I want you to go to lastevangelist.com, get involved. Uh, you can become a producer, executive producer, an actor, whatever, or if you, God lays it on your heart just to, to um, donate to help us, we would appreciate that. Uh, also, too, I've got a few more announcements here before I bring my wife on. I'll be in uh, Dayton November the 5th through the 7th on How Close Are We Conference. Go to hiddenday.com forward slash conference, um, and you can put the code in heaven or 20 to get a discount. Um, also, if you would like uh, to order something from Amazon, uh, simple. You just, um, I think it's like Amazon Smile. Uh, just make sure you put... Um, Go to smile.amazon.com forward slash ch forward slash four five dash two five four one three one three. And if you can remember that, um, I would need to get you on the show because you're supernaturally enhanced in your memory. Um, all right. My lovely, lovely wife, Shanita, are you there? Yes. And you don't have to remember anything. I'll just send you the link. So you all right. Send me the link. Okay. So uh, what's our praise reports today? 
I want to say happy birthday to my mom and thank you for the amazing heritage you've given me. I really appreciate and love you. I'm saying thank you to all the people who have been volunteering to get us where we are today. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Tom, Tony, Brianna, Sunshine, Alicia, Terry, Krista, Greg, Linda, and Jim. We really, really appreciate you. Um, I want to thank each of you for praying for Mark, our missionary friend overseas. He is now better. And you also prayed for Lynn. She is better as well. And Alicia, I want to thank you for your faith that you demonstrate. It's always a huge encouragement to me. Tonight we are praying for Shelly Dizdar, for Wesley, for Kathy, for Lynn's mom, for Cynthia, Sunny, for Alicia, Victoria. And I just received a text from someone asking for um, a job and for income, for financial needs to be met. And I want to thank Debbie for this email that she just sent. She said, I saw your interviews with Russ. I'm so thankful and blessed you got the testimonies of the general on such important topics full of knowledge of the enemy. Wow. So touching. You know, I got so many of those emails. You know what? It's sad that people have to, we have to know how important people are after they go to be with the Lord. Uh, we need to start telling people how important they are before that happens. Um, I think it's so important. Uh, Shanita, what's our prayer request uh, for, for today? Well, I have several and I'm more coming in. So we have those all on the prayer list. And we want to thank the prayer warriors for their support and for interceding. We're seeing God do such amazing things and answer prayers every week. So we thank you very much for praying with us. Absolutely. And, you know, there's 17 missionaries, including five children that were kidnapped in, um, in Haiti. I don't know what the, um, uh, what the latest is on that, uh, but um, we can find that out. Maybe Google it and find out. But I do want to pray for them. I meant to pray for them last week. Very important. Anytime God's people gets kidnapped, especially by the enemy, we got to come against that. OK. All right. So um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the words that were spoken during this time. I thank you for great warriors, those that are here with us and those that have gone on to be at home with you. Father, I come to you before the throne asking that you will put supernatural protection around our children. That the demons have no right to the children. The children who are in human trafficking, the children that are being abused, the children that are being kidnapped, the children that are being massacred through this thing they call abortion. I'm asking for that supernatural protect protection around each and every child right now. I'm praying for the single parent out there that's hurting. I'm asking you give them a supernatural comfort. The single mother out there that's really struggling, I'm asking, Father, that you let her know that you are with her right now and she is protected and guided by you, the Holy Spirit. There's a man out there battling prostate cancer. And I'm speaking to you. And you've tuned into this channel, maybe by accident, no accident. It was God. But he's speaking to you right now. And he's asking for you to repent. And as you repent, I'm asking God for a supernatural healing on you. To show God's miraculous power. There's someone out there that has been listening that says, David, I don't know God, the God you're talking about. I've been going to church all my life, but I don't know this God. I don't know this God of power. Right now, where you are, you can know him. You say, Lord, I repent. I want to be with you, walk with you the rest of my life. 
And the only way I can come to you, Father, is through your son, Jesus. And I believe him to be the only salvation for my soul. You said those words. You believe those words. I'm believing that your name is written in the book of life. There's someone out there that says, David, I've fallen away from God. I was walking with him, but things just, I looked around one day and I wasn't with God anymore. But right now, as you repent and go back to God, he's welcoming you with open arms. And I'm praising the Father for this as another child comes home. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there's no greater reward in life. But when a child of God comes home, goes to be with the Lord, knowing that they fulfilled the purpose in which they were created, there's no greater joy in life of seeing someone turn to God for the first time and become a child of God spontaneously, miraculously. There's no greater joy than seeing someone that's been separated from God come back to God. There's no greater joy than being with God's family, with you, every week. I want to thank you. I love you guys. Please go to davidhevener.tv and sign up so you can go with us underground because that's where we're going. But you know what? We may be going underground, but baby, we're flying high. We're flying high on the Holy Spirit. I want you to go and, go and join me. Subscribe now so you can go with us underground. It's the only way you can. And one day we won't be here. That's why I want you to go to davidhevner.tv. Just remember, you've never really lived till you found something, someone worth dying for. Christ Jesus. Love you.